there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. This is the new 2021 Kaigaloo 316. And two years ago, I did a review of this 2019 Kaigaloo 316. This was my first Parker dual fold style fountain pen, and I liked it so much, I bought two more. I called them Kanga, Roo, and Joey. No, and I called them Kanga, Roo, and Joey. And then I bought four Moonman M600s. I gave one of them away. And then a couple of Jin House Centennials and a Wingsung 670, and a Compline Durograph. So you could say I like this particular form of fountain pen. I even did a shootout called The Attack of the Clones, where I compared all of these pens. One of these days I'll get the real thing and do another sequel, Clone Wars, The Return of the Dual Fold. But today we have a new entry into the Clone Wars Dual Fold verse. Kaigaloo have updated their 316 with some significant upgrades and some notable flaws. So let's compare a two-year-old kangaroo with the new one, shall we? Right now. One of my first Parker Duofold clones, in fact the first I think, was the Kaigaloo 316. And this is the amber one that I got. This is a couple of years ago now. And it's a very nice pen, it's very heavy. And then came the Moonman M600. In fact, this is an M600S. And this beautiful amber acrylic, beautiful pen, and much lighter than the Kaigaloo. So I started collecting those. And then came the Jinhao Centennial or Jinhao 100. I've got a couple of these, and I put a new nib in this one, of course. It's an italics stub, and this is a beautiful pen. Uh, and then there was the Wingsong version of the Dual Fold, which came out recently. I did a review on it's the 670. I'm not as thrilled with this pen as I am with both the Moon Man and the Jinhao, which are really, really nice uh, pens in this Dual Fold kind of styling. So then I was intrigued by a recent eBay with a new Kaigaloo, uh, which looks um, like it's not just new acrylic. It has different features to it. So I bought another one, and we're going to find out what it looks like right now. And it's condom, and this is exactly what I was expecting. Now, this is interesting. Here is the Kaigaloo 316 from two years ago, and here is the 2021 version of it, and it's much lighter. And what do you know? I didn't know this either. That comes off of there, and it looks like the nibs have changed as well. Inquiring minds want to know how well does this pen stack up against its two main rivals in my mind, the Moonman M600S and the Jinhao 100 Centennial. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity while I was cleaning out this uh, Kaigaloo 316 to uh, do a few cool uh, geeky things with it. Why don't you just call tech support? Hey. <laughs> There's two kinds of people in this world. Those who call tech support and those who make fun of the people who call tech support. I call tech support all the time. <laughs> I've taken the pen all the way apart and that makes this new 2021 Kaigaloo 316 very different than the 2019 Kaigaloo 316 as this one wouldn't come apart in any way, shape, or fashion. But the new model comes all the way apart, so you have this very, very light barrel, very, very light cap, and the end finial, the barrel, comes off with a ring cap finial, 
comes off with a ring and holds the clip in place. Uh, the nib unit comes out of that barrel very, very easily. There's a silicone O-ring right there in the unit. And I'm sure, I haven't tried it, but I'm sure I can get that nib out of that nib collar. And the converter also comes apart. It's branded Kaiglu uh, and it has that agitator in there. Some people don't like the sound of their pen clicking, but you can take this apart just like this. That collar comes off. And you just pull this unit out and you can drop that ball out. Silicone grease that if you want. And put the whole thing back together again, and voila, no agitator. But I also wanted to fill this pen with uh, this sample that I have of Ackerman SBRE Brown. I have never tried this ink before. Now, getting that ink out of there is always a challenge, so I put it in my little ink buddy. Uh, this is a uh, resin 3D printed resin uh, tube that holds a standard plastic vial and keeps it stable while you ink. Plus I got these really cool needle fillers uh, in three different sizes. They come in four different sizes. There's a there's a sailor size as well. But this is standard international. That is I believe platinum and this is pilot. So I'm going to use the standard international uh, to fill up my pen. I'm going to push it in the end of the converter and I'm going to fill it up with some SBRE Brown but first let's put the pen back together again. Let's do it fast. There we go. Pen minus the ball. Now, let's fill it up. Now I'm going to twist down this converter and push some ink through that feed and watch for it to appear. There it is. And I'm going to take one drop out through the nib. There we go. I'm going to turn it back down again just to remove some of the excess ink from that feed. And we should be good to write. And on to the review. We interrupt this program to bring you a special report. So unfortunately, when I... All right, the power supply is reconnected. I think we're back in business. All right, all systems go in five, four, four three, three, two, one. <laughs> Ready to call tech support? Inked this pen up and then tried it. The nib was horrible. And I've got some photographs of the nib that I took close up to show why it's horrible. It was cut off center or the blob of iridium is lopsided anyway so no amount of polishing would make it right well at all. So I decided to see if I could swap it for this 2019 Kaigaloo nib and that nib is way too big. I've got a photograph of them side by side so you can see the uh, size difference between the two. It would not fit or force or anything. So I decided that I would dip into my nib archives and put a number six Jinhao nib in it. And that fit fairly well. 
and this isn't the most spectacular nib in the world it's a medium um, and I've written with it for a day or two and it's very wet and uh, it writes okay but it probably could take some work so now that I have a new nib on this pen let's go over its parts and features show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this pen and I'm going to do some comparisons with the 2019 version of the pen to show the differences now to head off any mail or comments I might get I'm calling this the 2019 version of the Kaigaloo 316 because I bought it in 2019 I know the pen's design predates my purchase so please don't tell me I'm wrong get out overall the major visual difference between these two versions is Kaigaloo have made the finials and the section out of the same resin as the rest of the pen on the new version there were no photos of the uh, new version uncapped so uncapping the pen was a pleasant surprise to find that section made of the same acrylic resin the major non-visual difference between these two pens uh, is a significant one um, the new pen is almost 20 grams lighter than the old one you have lost so much weight that must have been difficult for you because you were so so fat do you remember yes i do <laughs> of course you do who could forget being that fat and that was my biggest knock about the Kaigaloo 316 uh, the old version uh, that it was just way too heavy now let's take a look at the pen in more detail from the top we see the same a wonderful kangaroo logo of a mother kangaroo and with baby Joey in its pouch surrounded by laurel leaves under a dome of clear acrylic the domed acrylic adds a magnifying effect and makes the finial very attractive the only difference with the new finial is that the new one has the same acrylic as the rest of the pen rather than black plastic well I suppose the other uh, difference is that this finial will unscrew just like that whereas the other one seemed to have been glued in place the clip is held down by that finial and a single gold ring uh, the clips are identical to each other they're very springy and very usable the old version has a notch actually in the acrylic right there you can see it right there well, this one has no notch after the tapering finial the cap is straight until the cap band and this is completely redesigned in the 2021 version the new cap band is a single band of gold with two grooves and very ornate design of flowers and Celtic like knots that is deeply stamped or engraved and then infilled with black enamel and then the acrylic continues in a slight taper towards the end of the cap the old band was two rings separated by black enamel and then black plastic that tapered down to the barrel there's a small step down to the barrel which is straight until a single gold metal ring that separates the end finial from the barrel the end finial is the same acrylic um, only on this model the end finial unscrews Kaigaloo missed an opportunity to add a feature here by extending the piston knob of the converter through the end like on the Leonardo Momento Zero as it is this unscrewable end finial is kind of a useless feature the cap unscrews with one two full turns which is an improvement over the two and a half turns required for the 2019 version the section is made of the same acrylic as the cap and body which is great but what is not so great is they have redesigned the section to a new shape and you can see here that new shape and the section does not have a gold metal ring towards the end of the nib as this 2019 version does this is a pity because I really like this old section which is 
much more dutiful Centennial-like than the new version. It would have been nice to have seen the same shape with a gold ring on the end of the acrylic section. But this is the Jinhao No. 6 steel nib that I replaced because the Kaigalu would not write properly because it was cut off center. But let's look at the two Kaigalu nibs side by each anyway. So here's the new version, the uh, 2021 version on the left and the 2019 version on the right. The two nibs are not the same size. The engraving is the same, but the nibs aren't. Which leads me to speculate that Kaigalu have switched suppliers. These nibs are not swappable, as I found out. They seem to have the same issue that these older nibs had with the two-tone gold and silver not lining up. I know Matt Armstrong had a 316 where the gold was off-center. And this off-center matching of the gold and silver seems to relate to the off-center cut of the nib slit. As you can see here, the slit starts off to the right of the breather hole by the same amount that the gold doesn't line up. Here you can see that the gold is off by about a half a millimeter, which is about the amount that that breather hole slit is off from center. So perhaps this just wasn't placed in the machine properly to start with. Whatever, it makes this nib useless. The nib has some scroll work surrounding a kangaroo logo, and then the word Kaigaloo, and then a letter M for medium under a chevron. And you can see how deep that engraving is on the older one and how shallow it is on the new one here. The nib and feed are part of a nib assembly that unscrews from the section and the nib and feed are friction fit inside that collar. And this nib and feed is never coming out again. I tried for two days to get that Jin Hao out of there and it's now in there permanently. I'm doing the best I can. Wait. This is actually okay because the Jin Hao actually writes okay. The section unscrews to reveal the included and redesigned Kaigalu Standard International Converter. The converter is branded Kaigalu right there and can be disassembled for cleaning. The pen will take standard international cartridges with an extra in the barrel like a Joey in the pouch. Yeah, little fella, come get the food. I have always wanted to do this. Look at me, Lois, I'm Rue. <laughs> Come on, Ma, let's go watch Pooh trick the bees out of their honey by pretending he's a rain cloud. I thought that might be the reason for the removable end finial, that you can insert another cartridge in the back, but uh, Standard International doesn't uh, fit through that hole. Inside of the barrel shows a step milled into it uh, right there that lines up with the top of the section to make a cap seal. You can see them lining up right there. The cap posts not deeply but fairly securely and just like the old version and most of these dual fold like pens it makes the pen ridiculously long in the hand. Unposted, the pen is very comfortable and well-balanced. I bought this pen on eBay for $20.88 US, and it has gone up a dollar since. The new version is available in five colors, green, blue, purple, amber, and white, and all have gold trim. It is available in extra fine, fine, and medium. You have to look for the pens with the same acrylic on the finials, because the ones with black finials, I suspect, are the old, heavier models. I know it's not Kaigalu related, but I should also draw your attention to some eBay listings for the Jin House Centennial, which I feel is the best duofold style fountain pen choice for the money. Listings like these are genuine Jin Hao pens. However, look at this listing. This is supposedly a Jin Hao Centennial. It couldn't be farther from the truth. These generic metal fountain pens are total piles of crap. You are crap! I have one right here. This was labeled a Jin Hao Metal and also as a Jin Hao Centennial Metal fountain pen. I bought one more than a year ago and did a review. It's worse than garbage and I never inked it. 
Uh, look for a nib in the photos that has no branding on it whatsoever. There's no branding on this pen to say it's a Jin Hao. And it's not a Jin Hao. And look for those thick metal threads. Uh, and this pen is all metal to begin with, and then they spray painted it orange. Uh, and it also has, look for this feature too, it has the uh, extended uh, converter through the back of the pen. And you'll also find this pen as an italics chaplain's tankard, uh, but with one huge exception. The italics nib on this pen is worth the price of the entire pen, just to take the nib out and put in a real Jinhao. Here's my Jinhao, and here's the italics nib that came with the uh, chaplain's tankard. And that nib is just fabulous. Mr. Pen? Can you call that a radar screen? No, sir. We call it Mr. Coffee. Care for some? Yes! Dot com, I think, is the web address. I'll put it up here. Uh, but for italics pens. And Peter is going out of business very soon. And so if you want an italics pen, these Chaplin's tankards are very inexpensive and come with this nib. You can also get the nib unit. Isn't compatible with this, but you can pull the nib out of that nib unit and put it into your pen. This is now one of my favorite pens in my collection uh, with that italics nib. But these Chinese generic, uh, this one has a Jin Hao nib on it, but these Chinese generic pens um, are not Jin Hao's and they're horrible. The interesting thing is this pen is selling for more than this pen on eBay. So buyer beware. And now let's look at some size comparisons. And here we are with the Kaigaloo 316 2021 version. And here it is with the 2019 version. A Moonman M600S, a Jin Hao 100 Centennial, and a Wing Sung 670. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. And you can see that they are all challenged when it comes to posting. This is just what you get with this pen design. Also, you can see how the Kaigaloo, the Moonman, and the Jinhao all have very similar sections with the gold ring on them. Whereas the Wingsong doesn't have that gold ring. And the new Kaigaloo 316 has a different shape section. You might notice that this doesn't have a wing sung nib on it. It was an extra fine and I gave that nib away. That now has a full win uh, medium nib on it. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Kaigaloo 316. It is the 2021 edition with a replacement Jin Hao. Number six size steel nib. And this nib is very smooth and extremely wet, as you can see. But here's an image of how the pen wrote with the defective Kaigaloo nib. It was impossible to smooth out or adjust, so it wrote without any consistency at all. It skipped, felt scratchy, it did not lay down a consistent line thickness. And the ink today is Ackerman. S-B-R-E Brown, which was developed by my Alberta colleague, Dr. Stephen Brown, in collaboration with Ackerman. Stephen indicates this ink is now available again. Uh, I only have a sample of it, but the full bottles of uh, Ackerman ink are really kind of cool. They come, I don't know whether you can see this or not, they come in this large, tall-necked bottle with a uh, quite literally a bottleneck right here. And there's a marble or a ball at the top portion which keeps the top portion of the bottle full of ink all the time. So it 
makes it easy to access all of that ink. It's very clever. Here are some close matches to SBRE Brown from Inkswatch.com. And this line is 0.7 millimeters thick, which makes it a Western medium or a Japanese medium to broad. And this nib is a gusher. In fact, now that it's permanently in this pen, if I want to write with this pen, I'm going to have to uh, close down those tines a little bit. There's a number of different things you can do uh, to get a nib like that writing less wet. I might do those operations on this nib. And there's no point in testing the reverse and the quick writing and so forth. I know this is plenty wet and it's not the nib for the pen anyway. So what do I like and what do I not like about this pen? Well, putting aside the fact that the nib is defective for the moment, I really like the improvements the Kaigaloo has made to this new 316. The lighter weight um, is especially welcome. The same acrylic throughout the pen, the removal nib uh, are all great improvements. I was excited about this pen until I inked it up and wrote with it. I imagine that with a normal nib, this pen would get terrific marks from me. I don't like the section, however. Uh, not that I don't like it. I mean, I do like it. It writes okay. It feels okay. I just prefer the more classic one. And the engraving on the nib has gotten so light, it's ridiculous. You can hardly read it. The fact that the gold accents on this nib are not lined up properly. Um, and the fact that the nib slit is horribly off-center uh, to the point that it's defective point to some serious quality control issues with their nibs. And a fountain pen is only as good as the nib on the paper. I'm not impressed enough with the new 2020 Kaigaloo 316 to get another or to consider it a rival to the Jinhao Centennial. And I now consider the Jinhao Centennial the best dual-fold clone for the money. I adore this Jinhao Centennial with this fabulous italics cursive italic nib and there you have it if you like this video please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted and that just leaves it for me to say thank you for watching and that's all she wrote